Historically, the best leaders that humanity has seen have fallen into three distinct archetypal categories. And these are the kings, the prophets, and the priests. Over the years, human beings have lived and died learning small lessons and passing them on to future generations through writings, language, culture, and stories. Human beings, our societies, and the cultures that resulted evolved over tens of thousands of years to place us where we are now. Over this extreme time horizon, we have seen patterns emerge that are culture and time invariant, which hint at laws and structures at work deeper than what is visible. Some of these deeper truths discovered by humanity have been encoded into symbols and archetypes. There's no obvious purpose to the universe. There are no clear right answers to the colossal problems we face, and our biggest adversary is unknowable, the future. You can develop models to predict the future. You can look for signs and omens, but ultimately you will never be able to predict what will happen. The inherent instability of our state in the cosmos necessitates a robust method to deal with the fundamental unknowns of the world and the future. How do we deal with the precarious existence that we have been given? For most people, it is safest to trust in the societies that have been handed down to them. If they act as a cog in the machine, the machine will reward them by allowing them to survive. All people begin their lives on the shoulders of giants, relying on seemingly simple technologies and methodologies that actually took millennia to develop. For example, the chair, or the wheel, or basically any other technology you can think of. For most, it is safest to stay there and to simply maintain the world that they have been given. The risk of innovation is breaking the machine that your forefathers gave you. What happens when our societies, our technologies, our cultures, and our worldviews prove insufficient to deal with the horrors that lurk in the future? In the worst case, a society that is ill-equipped for a challenge that emerges will be destroyed. If the destruction is not total, a society will leave behind some survivors, a genetic imprint on the world, a set of lessons learned, or some improved evolution that ensures the next society is better equipped. With that said, history is still littered with entire tribes and peoples that were completely destroyed. We cannot rely on simple evolutionary survival to fight the world's challengers and adversaries. We need leaders. Leaders are the forces which guide the machine that is our society, harnessing the power of our minds and our conscious wills to optimize our efforts. Humanity progressed to some extent by harnessing the power of evolution and simple dialectic improvement, but the power that has rocketed humanity forward has been the focused power of our consciousnesses harnessed through the minds of great leaders. So what does this all mean? Essentially, evolution is a cheat code in the universe. It allows for seemingly exponential improvement using only linear effort. I would suggest researching evolutionary algorithms in the computer science field to understand this in more depth. Evolution via biological evolution, or the mimetic evolution of societies, has undoubtedly created incredible things in the world and has been the source of baseline innovation for biological life and for humanity. I would argue, though, that consciousness is a similar cheat code in the universe, and the three ideal archetypes of leadership reveal why. The king, the prophet, and the priest are three archetypes that humans have looked up to for millennia. The ideals embedded in these symbols are the highest levels people can attain to guide humanity. Each archetype serves as a guide in a unique dimension or optima. The first archetype is the king. The king is the one who ultimately steers the ship of society. Society moves where he wants it to move. If he chooses the wrong path and society suffers for it, then blame falls upon the king. The king takes on the responsibility of the deciding will, but also the accountability for the results of his decisions. 
These decisions ultimately flow from his conscious will. Some claim that free will is a myth, and human beings are deterministic, but this could not be further from the truth. The more likely explanation, in light of our revelations in quantum physics, is that human beings are likely probabilistic, similar to how quantum particles exist probabilistically. Particles do not exist in fixed locations, like visible objects do. Rather, particles exist in a cloud of potential locations, modeled by the wave function. When observed, the potential places the particle could exist randomly collapses into one definitive location with a lesser known velocity. The human mind likely operates in a similar manner. Nobel Prize winning physicist Roger Penrose and anesthesiologist Stuart Hameroff theorize that the microtubule structures within the brain serve as the seat of consciousness in orchestrated objective reduction theory. They claim that quantum mechanical effects have a major role in how our brains operate. It's likely that small probabilistic wave function collapses within the microtubule structures likely cascade upwards, resulting in observable actions at the visible level. I would argue that specific distributions of these collapses results from conscious will. This is an idea I will elaborate on further in the future. From this model of consciousness and will, human beings are not deterministic entities with our consciousness viewing our lives like a movie. Humans are likely mostly deterministic though, with most of our actions being determined by unconscious programming, but our consciousness plays a vital role in making higher level decisions. These decisions can be modeled similar to the wave function. There are an infinite number of potential actions a person can make when faced with a decision, but there are a finite number of actually probable actions. Our consciousness ultimately determines where the wave function will collapse, resulting in the corresponding action. Human beings are conscious, and our domination of all other animals on Earth is likely due in some part to our high levels of consciousness, not only our high intelligence. It is probable that this ability to leverage the power of conscious will is a power of similar scale to the computational power of evolution. Given that we do not fully understand the depth of the human equation, we cannot discount that consciousness may play a vital role and contain a hidden power which has given us an unprecedented evolutionary advantage. It would be irrational to ignore consciousness as a piece of the human puzzle, especially given that no robust and accurate model of consciousness even exists yet. Ultimately, the king is the master wielder of conscious will. Through the king's judgment, he leads his subjects to have an extreme competitive advantage over the challenges and enemies he faces. The next archetype is the prophet. If the world obeyed pure Newtonian rules, there would only be one deterministic world timeline that reality would follow. The truth is that reality is probabilistic at the quantum level. Reality may look deterministic at our visible scales, but probabilistic quantum effects can undoubtedly cascade up to the human level. And here's an example of how. Imagine you have a quantum random number generator that produces a number based on the wave function collapse of an observed particle. This number is completely random and is tethered to a quantum level effect. If you decide to assign a choice to each random number that is possible, such as going to the beach if the generator rolls a 1, or going to the mountains if the generator rolls a 2, then the quantum level effect will have a cascading and massive real-world effect at our visible level. Theoretically, there are an infinite number of ways the wave function could collapse in continuous systems. So if human beings are also probabilistic, there are an infinite number of real choices we could make corresponding to an infinite number of real possible paths reality could take as well. There are likely an infinite number of possible future paths humanity could take as a result and all of them are real. This is likely one reason why future prediction is such a difficult and likely impossible task. 
The future is likely unknowable, but truth itself is also uncertain. Gödel's incompleteness theorems, Hume's problem of induction, and Kant's critique of pure reason converge on the critical insight that pure logic or empirical observation alone is insufficient for arriving at all truths, highlighting the necessity of a priori assumptions or principles in constructing a coherent understanding of reality. Ultimately, we need to adopt certain a priori assumptions or beliefs to actually construct a framework for reality. Given an unknowable future and an uncertain truth, the archetype of the prophet aims to shed light on reality and provide some foundation for people to build upon. Prophets speak a priori truths that people can rely upon. By providing a baseline truth, people have a starting place to expand their ideas and determine the logical outcome and prediction of these a priori assumptions. Historically, prophets have also predicted events. There are an infinite number of future world lines, but prophets predict convergence points of all world lines where certain events will definitely transpire. I would call these points temporal anchors for all potential timelines. Ultimately, the validity of the prophet can be judged by whether or not his or her predictions come to pass. One may also judge a prophet based on the logical conclusions of their a priori principles. Without prophets, humanity would flounder in the unknown, with nothing solid to grasp onto. The final archetype is the priest. Each human being faces the same dilemma. We live for the blink of an eye, and we have no certain path for how to use our lives in the best manner possible. How do we know if we've lived a good life? How do we know what to strive for? This is the role of the priest archetype. The priest works to become the ideal model for a human being, working diligently to perfect the mind, the body, and the soul. The priest aims to live in such a way that he can be an example to follow. By becoming the ideal, the priest is able to be the interceder between the highest ideal, God, and humanity. The priest also has deep roots in the symbolic and narrative tapestry woven by humanity over the course of tens of thousands of years. Priests channel the ultimate ideal, and they also become the most ideal version of themselves to serve as beacons for people to live the best life that the people can live. The everyday man does not need to reinvent the wheel within their own life. They have a living, breathing example to imitate. They have priests who uphold the priestly traditions and the culture of the ultimate ideal. The power of this archetype can most clearly be seen by the fact that most saints throughout history have been priests or nuns. These three divine archetypes, which we have seen define the most influential leaders in human history, are the ideal that our leaders should strive for and that we as individuals should also strive for. There is also an unavoidable spiritual or mystical component to these archetypes and the qualities they bring to the table. It is no mistake that kings throughout history have also harnessed the symbolic and narrative connection between their rule and God. The Chinese Mandate of Heaven, Louis XIV, the Sun King, the Japanese Divine Emperor, and the Egyptian Pharaoh are all powerful examples of this archetype bridging history. Deconstructivists would say that this symbol was simply used by the powerful to manipulate the masses. But a more nuanced view would be that our collective knowledge sees something deep, powerful, and true within the divine leader. This archetype can be used to mislead the masses, which is why leaders need to adopt the goal of attaining moral perfection, as the priest does. Great leaders must also profess the truth they believe, instead of hiding what they truly believe behind a veil. And this is what the prophet does. If the leader professes falsehood, it will be clearly known in due time. Thus, these archetypes only work when one truly aligns themselves with the moral good and the truth behind reality. Harnessing the archetypes of the divine leader while being aligned with the inverse of morality and truth has its own symbol, the Antichrist. 
History is littered with examples of the Antichrist archetype, with one of the most stunning examples being that of Hong Ziquan, a Chinese revolutionary who claimed to be the brother of Jesus Christ. He began the Taiping Rebellion in 1850, which led to the deaths of 20 to 30 million people. The 20th century is also littered with leaders who portrayed themselves to be divine, such as Joseph Stalin, Emperor Hirohito, or Adolf Hitler, and their obviously warped relationship with the truth and the good can clearly be seen by the trail of bodies and suffering that each leader left behind. The archetype of the divine leader is powerful, so it is imperative that divine leaders are also extremely moral and truthful. It is easy to become cynical of these symbols, given the horrific consequences of the inversion of this archetype. But to adopt the cynical and fruitless attitude that spiritual archetypes should be discarded is potentially to throw away an invaluable social technology at a minimum, or even ignoring a fundamental truth about the universe which took humanity tens of thousands of years to discover. Ultimately, the best leaders likely align themselves to these divine traits. Leaders who pursue other archetypes, or laugh at the divine, likely do so at the peril of themselves and the systems they lead.